Hey everyone, welcome back. This is um, the last principle we're going to talk about and next we're going to move on to the techniques module. This one um, is a principle that we like to, to mention. It's got a, a very practical application and it's really important uh, for the organization of your system. Because we talked a lot about stratification, um, succession of species, and how agroforestry systems are so versatile and you can do so much. And there's so many variables you have to take into account that sometimes it's even hard to start planning your system. I mean, you've got to start somewhere, but if there's so many possibilities, you want to have it all, right? We want to have mm -hmm. it all. Mm -hmm. And we've got to start choosing um, a focus for our system. So what's the focus of production in our system? And this is what this chapter is about. Yeah, so let's give you a few things to reflect upon uh, when, when, when time comes to make this, this choice. Really, uh, lifestyle, you know, lifestyle you want for, for you and for your family, your routine, that's really something you should be thinking about right now. Uh, if, if, you know, obviously, uh, I understand that if you, if you want to make it commercial, so already your lifestyle, you're already going to be like, let's say, stress-free from being around all the, all, all the life and all, all the abundance. So already we're talking about a stress-free lifestyle, but what we want to talk about, the kind of lifestyle, is the kind of routine you have with your market. Uh, so really, it's a case where if you, if you think you have uh, a veg fruit and veg stall, you know, like a market in the city, uh, you really, you're really going to be thinking about planting veg, won't you? Fresh stuff. If you're planting fresh stuff, then you're really going to be thinking about having a market because, uh, you know, it's not the kind of thing you, you can accumulate to make that one sale at the end of the month and accumulate and stock to sell at the, at the right times, you know, in, considering the strategies with, uh, you know, with things that you can stock and, and sell it at a later time of the year where maybe there's a greater value for exporting and things like that as well. So it really is a case where if you think you can, uh, if you would like, you know, to be at home and, and not have to be at the market 7 at 7 a.m., 6 a.m., uh, two, three times a week, well then you might want to think about having your main crops, uh, something that you be able to uh, process once you've processed this this is the key once you process if, you, if you've dried this banana if you've sun dried this tomato you know you really can put it into jars put it into packs and then you, you got yourself a six months valid day two year valid day on that and that's really a different whole different ball game you know you can work with uh, one or two clients you can work with uh, pre-orders for all of that kind of stuff when we're dealing with with fresh veg you really need to be on your toes on that because you know it's good today tomorrow's no good no more and you really got to be like so it's really a different routine altogether yeah uh, um, this has a, a, a it's really really important to consider I, I like to use the, the the concept of systems of production right if you're going to produce vegetables you have a specific systems a system of production which requires not only a specific routine of planting, routine of harvesting, routine of going to the market. It demands a specific infrastructure to process these vegetables. Whereas if you... Investment. Investment. If you're going for fruit production, it's a completely other routine. It's, it's a completely different infrastructure that you need. And so for your garden, obviously you want to have a lot of diversity for consuming, right? Yeah. And it's easy to keep a small agroforestry plot very diverse with many different fruits. You don't need uh, two orange trees. You can have an orange and a mandarin and then, and then something else. So you, you can have a, a very diverse plot. But when you move up scale, it starts getting really hard to maintain too much of a diverse system because 
all the management is, is different from one plant to the other. So it really, really have to start narrowing down. So which is our main crop? So what's the focus of my production? It doesn't mean that I'm not gonna have a diversity of plants, but it means, for example, if I want to be a coffee producer, if coffee is my main crop, and we have already talked about coffee, coffee occupies the low layer of the forest. So in this layer, I'm not gonna have anything else but coffee. And then I'm gonna have occupied in the other layers, other species. This has a very, um, it, it helps a lot when you're organizing all the log logistic of harvesting, yeah. of pruning coffee. I think, I think uh, really to, to, to care for what your community has the tradition to produce, you know, because uh, it really makes it a whole lot easier if, you know, if you're in a coffee region and, you know, and, and I've harvested this coffee, I've got someone to send it to, someone who's got to roast it for me. Now, you know, if I'm producing, uh, we're here in the center of Brazil, we're coffee region, we're not cacao region. So if I was to produce cacao here, I want to know what to do with it, you know? I won't have nowhere I can send it. So really, uh, you really got to consider if you're in the Mediterranean, you know, you're going to want to figs and olives. So, because you, you've got that kind of corporations all working behind you already, you know, and count that you've got to have, you know, uh, a quality produce. And, you know, when you've got quality, you've got to have sales on that, not to worry about the competition, really, if you, we're working with quality. But uh, really consider the region you work with, you know, with the coffee situation, when it comes to, to May, June, you know, you really need that, that workforce of people coming in to harvest. Uh, so you really need to fit in with the kind of tradition that the community and the, and the manpower you have. And if you've got a certain scale, the machinery that's gonna come in and where you're gonna send that to, you know, so really consider, have that sensibility to understand uh, what the region uh, is used to working with because you know that might help you obviously you don't have to limit yourself on this you know you can create your own industry you can send it a little bit further you can you know prove people wrong and, and produce this here it, these things can happen and you know it's all down to your investment and your planning but do take these things into consideration yeah for sure so once you have taken into consideration all this um, so to start really designing your system, I like to say that for home pro producer, so if you're producing for your own house, you should strive for maximum diversity. But if you're going commercial scale, you should focus on two, maximum three crops. So we should have our main crop, and then we can have second crops. And then we're gonna have service plants, which are those that are here to serve our crops. It's important to bear that in mind because when we choose our main crops, for example, let's take this as an example. In this plot, the main crop is grass. What Gennaro wants to produce here is grass. Okay, it's the main thing. He's got bananas, he's got eucalyptus, he's got some palm trees, he's got a bunch of other stuff, but the main crop is grass. So he's not gonna let any of the other species mess up his grass system. Because he wants to produce grass. If he has some banana, great. If he has some heart of palm, great. But he can't do that in the expense of grass. He needs grass system. So all the others are gonna be pruned and managed in order to benefit the grass system. Um, this is really important to bear in mind so that you, you can plan the, the management of your system because sometimes it's really hard to please everybody, to have it all. The, the, there's a limit to how much you can do. Uh, and I, I think many people when they're, they're starting out in agroforestry, they get really excited and they want to plan everything, but then it turns out it's really hard to keep everything going, to keep everything perfect because you lack a focus. Yeah, uh, that's great for, for, your, for your home, 
you know, for, for your, your home garden, that's great. If you've got that small market or, or you're just helping, uh, you're chipping into someone's market, you know, to have that maximum variety with, you know, that half acre there. But you know, oh, surely once you've got a little bit larger scale, you've got to know a little bit more of what, what you're talking about. You've got to look for some consultancy. When you go larger, you know, it's the kind of errors you won't be wanting to make. Uh, um, diversify, diversifying to the point where you, you can't harvest this, you know. Uh, where it's, you know, it's, it's one of those things. If you've got citrus, I've got, I'm planting four different types of citrus. I'm not going to plant citrus one, citrus two, citrus three, citrus four, and then repeat that one, two, three, four, because I'm going to have, I'm going to harvest one, I'm going to, I'm going to harvest lime here, and then four citrus from now, harvest another lime, and then four, so we're not going to, you know, I'd rather have eight limes together, you know, so really, exactly. you know, uh, the idea of working in plots, we're not saying that your, your farm needs one main crop, but in your system, it's a lot easier to have Oh, I have a small plot of mandarin, then a small plot of oranges, then a small plot mm -hmm. of limes. It and really these, helps organize these service things. crops. You know, you can harvest them as well. They, they, it can be, it can be things where we will we'll return you. You sure. know, but a lot of the time, something like beans, sweet potatoes, something that will come and will cover the, the the soil, while your cassavas and something else might might pop up. So it's all things that you're harvesting as well. You can play with that. And that's going to work for you and it's going to benefit your soil and you know it's really going to service that main crop of yours and, and that's going to pay as well and that's the beauty if you can make your service crop pay for everything i mean that, that's when that's it that's what's really exciting this exactly. whole agroforestry system and it's really Just interesting win -win. To, to consider since we talked about succession of species we could have a succession of main crops right so if i decide they, I want to be an orange producer, for example. My oranges are going to start producing five years from now, you know, to really have a start to have a significant harvest. So I know that in five years from now, so when I'm later on, on, a, on a late stage of succession, I know that orange is going to be my main crop. I might help have some some timber trees, some some mahogany for the future occupying the emergent strata. I might have some coffee underneath, but it's not gonna be so significant. I'm gonna have oranges really, really danced up. And so I've mean. got second crops and service crops, right? But until the orange starts producing, in the first year, maybe I had corn as my main crop, consorciated with beans. Maybe I had cassava as my a second main crop, consorciated with squash and maybe I had banana as a third main crop consorciated with taro so I had all these harvests significant harvests before my oranges started producing so it's really important in each stage of succession you define okay the focus of production is this this and that so that you don't plant 20 things and then you just have a little bit of something you want to yeah. have a lot of one thing instead of, and a little bit of others instead of a little bit of a hundred different items yeah you know and and I just just uh, running a little bit from the, the main topic here and you know your service crops always think about the animals always think about the birds always think about that fruit that's going to draw up in the worms I've got to work on that yeah be generous yeah think about them for sure you're going to look after your your the creatures around right so uh, let's look after your main crops and let's look after the animals as well. Yeah, th this Sorry. is a very, very great topic you, you brought up because even if you have a, a, a second crop, for example, if I'm an or coming back to the orange example, I'm an orange producer, but I'm pro all, I also ha have caja trees, which are a native species here in Brazil, a great emergent uh, species. Lovely okay. fruit, nice yeah. juice, everything. Uh, it's called, sp uh, scientific name is Spongias monbin. It's got a, um, a, a small yellow fruit, very acidic, great for juices, and great for birds. So isn't that great? It drops its leaves during uh, the dry season. Mm -hmm. So it, it allows um, sunlight to come through, and it produces great fruit that we're gonna use. Maybe we're not really selling them, mm -hmm. but we're gonna use for our own produce, for, for our own consume. And birds are gonna feast 
and bring seeds and bring manure and since we're talking about the kaja patterns. we're running away each time but since we're talking about the kaja you know it's got an amazing root you know when you plant it by seed that root shoots down uh it, it goes it goes thick and it retains water and what does it do so because we, we want the importance of of other things going on as well it's going to donate water to the neighbor tree in in the drought season so let's look after the soil as well our service crops working underneath the soil kasha is working for us in the dry season with the neighbors you know but uh, you know it's the kind of it's the kind of plant that you, if you chop a branch and you stick it in it's got to go as well but it's not going to have that same root system so again going back it's plant by seed it's plant by seed that's great you get the correct roots how it was meant to be all right guys um i hope this was um helpful and and i hope we made ourselves clear on this idea of choosing the main crops so that you know how your system is going to be balanced and how you're going to direct all the services all the activities in the system and i'll catch you up in the next video nice one. cheers <laughs>